Good morning and welcome to Morningside United Parish Church as we celebrate Remembrance Sunday, honouring those who gave their lives in the Great War and in the Second War and wars thereafter. We're gathering together to reflect and to consider sacrifice, to understand the gift of life that was made by many men and women so that we might enjoy our freedoms. In our remembrance, we seek not to be empty, but to recall with true thanksgiving the worth of life sacrificed on our behalf. The Scottish war poet Charles Hamilton Sorley was 20 years old when he died in 1915 at the Battle of Lewes. He was one of the youngest of the major war poets. Hear his words. When you see millions of the mouthless dead across your dreams and pale battalions go, say not soft things as other men have said that you will remember, for you need not so. Give them not praise, for death, how should they know it's not curses heaped on each gashed head, nor tears. Their blind eyes see not your tears flow, nor honour, it's easy to be dead. Say only this, they are dead. Then add thereto, yet many a better one has died before, then scanning all or crowded mass, should you perceive one face that you loved heretofore, it's a spook, for none wears the face you knew. Great death has made all his forevermore. These striking words have no sentiment. They sum up the cost of war. We do not celebrate, we remember lives. Ellie Weissel, the Holocaust survivor, and campaigner for peace says this, I've given my life to the principle and the ideal of memory and of remembrance. And when we consider through words and actions how we want to remember, we should see as John Keats would have it, that poetry should strike the reader as a wording of highest thoughts and appear as a remembrance. In these next few moments, take time to be still, to give thanks and to remember. Shortly, we will be silent for a minute. And this is not much time to give for those who gave their lives for us. So how should we use this time of remembrance? Can I ask that you shape this time beyond memories or pride or sorrow or anger? Shape this time with the silence of heaven as we confront the journey that brings us here and the way we choose to live recognising the cost and choices we make as human beings towards one another. Shape this time so that it becomes the most valuable thing that holds silence and allows us to see through the pain of conflict and war some different hope. For some of us, a minute will seem too short. Thoughts will be with them when they cannot be forgotten, someone lost. Some of you will remember friends or family who paid the supreme price of their lives. Remember their courage and all that was good and true. And for those of you who are watching who are too young to remember, just I ask this, that you pray for those affected by war and conflict today. Pray for the young men and women who fight in our name, remembering their service to their country as you renew your duty to support them. Pray for the innocent victims of war, for those who hunger and are homeless because of our inhumanity. Pray for peace and pray that God's kingdom will come. So in the next few moments, we're going to stay silent as we remember the courage and comradeship, the ingenuity and the working spirit of people gathering together for a common cause to create a better world and the coming of peace. We'll remember the call to arms, the patriotic songs, the partings which were such sweet sorrow. We'll remember carnage, the horror of war. We'll remember the widows, the old men and women who never knew their fathers. We'll remember love that was lost and wisdom wasted and the minds that are pained by memories. We'll think of families bereft by recent wars and conflict. And we'll remember this day the children who will die while nation fights nation. And we'll remember the one who asked us to remember them. Father, remember us and forgive us our sins against you and against our fellow man. 
So let us remember before God those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory was treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of humankind. We remain silent. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. <laughs> Let us pray. Eternal Father of each one of us, we praise you and we worship you because your love is unending and your mercy limitless. Your power is infinite and your grace unbounded. 
You alone give life its full and true direction, and you bring good out of evil, life out of death, and hope from despair. You concern yourself with us despite our unworthiness. So this morning, faithful and gracious Father, we offer you our praise with reverent, humble, and thankful hearts, asking that you might fill us with your spirit so that we can receive every consolation. But Heavenly Father, our human history condemns us, making plain our sinfulness. You know that we're unable to live together in harmony for our self-assertions, our greed, our ignorance and prejudice and envy ensures that peace is too often short-lived. We let pride and false patriotism blind and deafen us whilst justice and mercy go unheeded. We abuse the gift of knowledge and technology. We use it for ill rather than for good. But more than this, we know that you know every dark corner of our hearts. You know our fears and worries and our insecurities that turn too quickly to anger and resentment. We affect those who are our neighbours, our families and our friends. So hear our sorrow as we humbly acknowledge that we are not worthy of your mercy or the sacrifices made on our behalf by others who gave their life. We confess our sins in shame and sorrow and ask your forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. There is no greater love than this, that someone should lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his mother's master is about. I have called you friends because I have disclosed to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go on and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father may give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my commandment to you. Love one another. And from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, at chapter 6, hear these words. You do not belong to yourselves, you are bought at a price. Amen.
St Paul writes these words in his letter to the Corinthians, Know that you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. This is truly one of the most evocative phrases in the scriptures, for if we consider its worth and meaning, we recognise that we are truly bought with a price. And on this Remembrance Day, above all others, we should be conscious of the fact that our lives, our freedoms, our sense of who we are has been bought by the sacrifice of others. Whether in the great wars of the last century or by the lives of men and women who've gone out in our name to places like Iraq and Afghanistan and given their lives for us and for our country. You see, the story of remembrance tells of countless blessings but it also tells of pain and sacrifice. And this is something I become aware of when I visit homes of older people in particular. You notice the photographs on the walls and mantelpieces, wartime weddings, men in uniform, brides in utility suits, picture portraits of young men, some whom you could barely call adults, schoolboys that are speaking of different times and occasionally of our country's finest called to serve and to pay the ultimate price. Our remembrance, you see, is not just about the past, because the sacrifice and service to our common values continues even today. We are told that there are people who are part of our community that seek to serve in the armed forces in situations that we do not always comprehend, but they volunteer and they still go. So how do we make sense of this in the light of our Gospel reading? No man has greater love than this than to lay down his life for his friends. In my parish here in Edinburgh, there's a care home where many years ago I met a remarkable lady who died when she was 103. She was someone who had been widowed early in her life in the last year of the war, the first war in 1918. And when I had met her, she'd been widowed for nearly 80 years. And she kept by her bedside a small photograph of her husband in his uniform. It was creased and well-thumbed. It was her only remaining connection with the man whom she loved, who disappeared in action in the Great War. I was told that every night before she went to bed, she would kiss this photograph in remembrance of a love that has never been forgotten. And she told me once, I loved him then, and I love him still. She's gone to God now, but I hope and pray that her faith has been rewarded, and in her remembrance, she's reunited with the husband that she had lost decades before. Her remembrance was deeply moving for her family and for her carers. For her, every day was a poppy day. And this extraordinary love taught me about remembrance more than any book of history or story of war. The enduring faithfulness to a husband's memory, reminding us of the human cost, the quiet dignity of mourning that touched so many lives here in Scotland and elsewhere, the unconquerable hope of sacrificial love. Love, you see, that sustains a deeper memory. No man has greater love than this, saith the Lord, than to lay down his life for his friends. In these difficult times, when COVID is affecting our lives and when the pandemic is preventing people gathering as they ought at our war memorials, perhaps there's a greater need than ever to simply remember in our homes and in our hearts. Because remembrance honours the stories of those who've given their lives even to death, stories reflected in sacrifice so that we can have and be all that we are now. And Tennyson, the poet, makes sense of this when he has the aged Ulysses say that I'm part of all that I have met. In other words, he saw that everything he had Everything that had happened in his life journey had contributed to his making. And today, on the Day of Remembrance, we're compelled to think of those who've given us what we have and who have made us what we are. 
St Paul's words ring true for every generation, whether for those in that generation formed by the sacrifices of so many in two great wars, or our own children formed in society marked by the sacrifices of Iraq or Afghanistan, people who can see the instances of war throughout this world, people who are affected simply by watching on television and on the internet man's inhumanity. We're not our own, as St Paul would have it. We have been bought with a price. So let us on this day remember those to whom we owe so much and whose memory we would want to truly honour. And can I suggest this is how we do this? Surely the first on our remembrances has to be parents and grandparents, our families, those who, to whom we owe our faith from those who've nurtured us and given us their all. We owe them our lives in every sense, and it's only at the peril of another's life that we enter into this world. So consider your homes and remember the sacrifices made for you. Remember how many have done without for your sake, how many have stoically got on with it even when adversity has touched family life. Remember them this morning, for it's in ordinary homes like yours and mine that the brave and servicemen and women whom we honour were nurtured, loved and cherished. Their heroism was drawn from the values from our homes, from the loving care and example of people unknowingly pointing to deeper truths, love, sacrifice, courage and hope, virtues that are practised every day in homes throughout this land, not amongst heroes, but with our heroes. And the second thing we must remember is the heroic worth of all people affected by war, whether soldier or civilian. And I bring to you this morning people not less worthy because they're unnamed and unknown. Not for them a name scripted on the village or town cenotaph. For these are they whose suffering and martyrdom and death came out of violence and war. The innocents. People whose fate was to go out by the door of death out by that door rudely opened by our cruelty and inhumanity. And their battle honours run like a roll call of evil throughout history. We think of the victims of Hitler, of Stalin, of Saddam Hussein, of the Taliban, of the slaughtered innocents in places like Bosnia. We remember those who have been murdered by terrorism, acts of violence that have torn the heart out of humanity in country after country. In Europe, we remember the scandals of the wars, particularly those that left tens of millions dead. We consider the fields of polished stone and acres of graves that litter Flanders and speak of a harvest of sacrifice of those who are simply known to God. And picture, if you will, the fear engendered by bombing raids over the Clyde and Coventry, the London Blitz, the bleakness of Atlantic convoys, the terrors of the Burma Railway, the deprivation of separation from the people who were deeply loved. We remember because our gospel points to a connectedness to their stories. Our remembrance points to their worth as part of the body of Christ, for no life is in vain when touched by God. And our response to this is that you and I have to remember and to love too even in the face of opposition and even to the point of sacrifice. And finally, we have to remember those that gave their lives in the wars, those who gave themselves to be a living wall between their country and her enemies, for their sacrifice cannot be forgotten. And this is a challenge, for in this matter we are not amidst the great names that shine and glitter among the pages of the books of history. We honour the best in the ordinary. We remember those in our war memorials, even here in this church. For I'm taking the service at our First World War Memorial, which is our communion table. Names are etched on its front. And beside me I have the Book of Remembrance, page after page of names that have been given, sacrifices by people who lived locally. Peoples who lived in this area, in Morningside and Brantsfield and Merkiston. For our heroes lived and loved here in Edinburgh. They attended schools in this area. 
They sat in the pews that all of us would sit in in ordinary times. And their names are not a footnote in history, for they served. They were some mother's sons. They were brothers and fathers who without romance or glamour went to far corners of the earth and the seven seas in defence of the things and people that they loved here in Edinburgh. And some never came back. And some who did come back came to a life that would never be the same again. And for others left behind in this life, life has been lonelier and emptier. We remember them. We thank God for them. As we echo the sentiments of the war poet Rupert Brooke, to keep the loyalties young, we'll write those names golden forever, like eagles crying flames, and set them as a banner that men may know to dare the generations burn and blow out of the wind of time, shining and streaming. These are difficult times for all of us, but even in these times, we are duty bound to remember, to consider the lives of those who paid the supreme price, who sacrificed and who honoured us by giving themselves to a data truth, to the virtue of sacrifice and loyalty that allows us to live better lives. And so let me make this prayer. Almighty Lord, we give you thanks for your saints, the faithful servants, but especially this day for those brave men and women who in the service of their country laid down their lives for our sake and whom you have now gathered into the peace of your presence. Let the memory of their devotion be forever an example to us that we may be taught to live by them who learned to die for us and grant that we might seek to live our lives as a testament to their memory so that in honouring the sacrifice that they made on our behalf being faithful unto death they might receive the crown of life of as saints in heaven as we honour them on earth we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen Remembrance is a difficult and complicated process. It's a process where people have torn loyalties, where hearts are pulled to think and to consider when we face the mirror of our own inhumanity and our own suffering. But we know that we cannot bring the death back to life. But Jonathan Sachs, the chief rabbi, wrote this. We can bring their memory back to life and ensure that they are not forgotten. We can undertake in our lives to do what they were so cruelly prevented from doing in theirs. This then becomes our mantra of hope, even as we remember. So let me finish by reading these words of the Welsh poet Dylan Thomas. They shall have stars at elbow and foot. Though they go mad, they shall be sane. Though they sink through the sea, they shall rise again. Though lovers be lost, love shall not, and death shall have no dominion. We shall remember them. It's our duty. It's a mark of our humanity. It's the gift of God to us to consider those who paid the price, who loved even with their own lives. Amen. We'll now make our prayers for the world, for ourselves and for others. Loving God, on this day of remembrance, we give thanks for the Queen, for those who serve the Crown and in her name, our soldiers, our sailors, our airmen, those who serve in the Merchant Marine, those who work to ensure the safety of this land and its borders. We give thanks for the sacrifice of all who serve in our name. Loving God, we pray for our country, for its leaders at Westminster and Holyrood. We ask your blessing upon their efforts to rule with justice, to create peace and concord. We pray that they might be inspired to serve a common good, to draw our communities together, particularly at this time of pandemic, when so many are feeling isolated and suffering and where the economic impact of the virus is affecting the lives of so many families. And loving God, 
we remember those people who are homeless, people living on the street or affected by addictions, people who are in strange circumstances, rejected by friends and family, afflicted by mental health problems, those who are living with anxiety and depression. We remember our families who are sick, the people known to us and in our community who are affected by the COVID virus. We pray for the NHS, for all its workers. We remember the efforts of those in social work and social care and health services who seek to serve those who are suffering at this time. Give them strength and courage to do all that they do in our name. And we remember our families. We pray for them in a moment's silence. Loving God, bless the homes of those whom we love. Carry them into their tomorrows, granting them peace and joy. And where there are troubles in our homes, allow your presence to bring healing and strength and courage. And finally, loving God, we offer to you the memory of those whom we've loved and lost who are now counted with the saints in heaven. We pray for those who are mourning, wipe away their tears, and we give thanks that the people we've loved are now with you amongst the saints. Reassure us that we shall be together again. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. for God's blessing. May the gentle love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit enfold you and keep you in the days that lie ahead. Might you be given strength in your remembrance and in your memories. Might be granted hope and peace and love. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and remain with you and all whom you cherish now and forevermore. Amen.